says uh, it's going to be tough regardless of the difference in experience and depth between these two teams. And he said, I love this quote, <laughs> yeah. I'm an idiot, but I'm not that big of an idiot. We will not overlook SMU today. <laughs> and Forrest Gregg, of course, on the other side for the Mustangs, says after an off week, they basically tried to go back to basics. And that's what you do when you have a young team. They both have a lot of young players, but you go back to the, to the basics that you normally do and you do so well. Well, earlier today, members of the SMU chapter of Alpha Tau Omega began a relay at TCU's Eamon Carter Stadium carrying the game ball across the Metroplex here to Ownby Stadium. Their 46-mile run raised more than $6,000 for Texas Partners for Drug-Free America. Uh, today has also been proclaimed ATO Day in Dallas by Mayor Annette Strauss of Dallas. And we're about ready to kick it off. Craig Beacon, a true freshman from Southwest High School in Fort Worth, will kick it off for the Frogs of TCU. They hope to go 3-1 and one for the first time since 1984. That's a magical season in TCU history. It's their last bowl season when they went 8-4. and four. And a good deep kick returned by Michael Artmore from about two yards deep. And out to the 20. So the run and shoot of SMU will go to work behind sophomore quarterback Mike Romo from San Antonio Roosevelt. Numbers this year after the Vanderbilt game were phenomenal. He had six touchdown passes and then uh, intercepted by Tulane twice and only one touchdown pass in that big loss in New Orleans a couple of weeks ago. But Romo in just... A 13-game SMU career, way up on the Mustang record charts. And out of the one-back set, they go to work on the ground with Kevin Love, the big sophomore from Houston, who's going to be close to a first down as he hits the 30-yard line. Rest of the offense with Romo in the backfield, Corey Beard and Kevin Love, and then the receivers, Andy Bergfeld, Michael Bowen, and Daniel Eccles up front for the Mustangs. Eldridge, Hart, Weisenbaker, Rosales, and Giller will do the blocking. And Dave, one of the big pluses about SMU in the win over Vanderbilt, they didn't have to pass to move the ball. It's easily the best they've run since they installed the running shoe last year. Absolutely, that's what you want to do. Just start that running game and let it control the line of scrimmage, and uh, then it opens up the passing game. Love again that time, going to be close to the first down. The TCU defense in the 4-3 alignment. Tunji Bolden, James Prather, Jarrett Ferguson, and Roosevelt Collins up front with Cobble Smith and Booker, the linebackers, and a secondary, which has allowed 71% completions in the first three games. Brown, Hickman, Crump, and Rand. And Romo's got to be drooling when he looks at that 71% number. Bowen, the man in motion on first and 10. Romo looking left, now right. Bowen cuts to the middle for about five. Well, here's today's Southwest Airlines team must. Well, first of all, for SMU, they must regain the composure that they had at Vanderbilt. They lost it last week. They pressed. They had a terrible time two weeks ago, I should say, at Tulane. They have to protect Mike Romo. He was under a lot of pressure. And, of course, contain Curtis Motkins. Motkins, 77 runs or 72 runs had a four-and-a-half yard average. So they've got a big order ahead of them. Beard goes in motion. The other way on second down. Three wide outs on the right side. And Romo with the option the other way turns it up. He's going to be about a yard shy of what he needed for another first down as Tunji Bolden, number 91, the left defensive end, brought him down. And Dave, I know when Mike Romo looks at those statistics about the 71% uh, completion, he's saying hey, that's a normal passing game. Our game should be even greater than that because we pass those little short dinks and dabs down the field. Well, against Vanderbilt, he is a little different than the running shoot of SMU because they have a great side of the lane. He's talking to Jim Lackery at one point. He's different than the triple shoot. And the running shoot is Kelly Blackwell. Last year, at 33 receptions, so far this year, 24 receptions, the best three-game total ever for a wide receiver. And the ball caught by Bowen. He's got the first down. LaVoyle Crump wraps him up as he reaches the 48-yard line. And basically, listen, this is what we will see all day from SMU, the control passing game. Absolutely. Bowen coming out of the backfield. That's one of his favorite receivers, number 17. Watch him coming out off the line here. Does a quick out. Just enough to get the first down yardage. Turns and almost breaks a tackle here. Just about had that leg strength 
but enough to get that first down. They're moving the ball. Going in motion on first down. Romo well protected again. And over the middle, ball is caught by Love. Gang tackled as he reaches broad territory at the 45-yard line. Now, I know we've only run seven or eight plays, but this is a much different SMU team than what we saw two weeks ago against Tulane. They're taking what TCU is giving them, the underneath passes. Versus Tulane, Mike Romo kept on thinking, I've got to get back in this game, I've got to pass long, and he got in trouble. Now they're taking advantage of what's being given them. Pick up of seven on first down. So second and three is Beard. Moves behind Romo to a wide left spot and a lot of movement and a lot of flag. Romo may be changing his rhythm and might have upset his own offensive line in addition to perhaps drawing somebody from the TCU defensive line offside. Well, that's one of the things that happens whenever you run a multiple offense like this, you cause a lot of motions. You have people running and stopping. As we look at today's officials, you have a lot of people that are running and stopping at different positions and then another motion, so you sometimes confuse your own team. Mark off of five will put it right at the 50. Forrest Gregg says feels very confident coming into this game. He thinks his team responded the way he wanted them to after the two-lane blowout. They realize they're not to the point where they can be overconfident about anyone. Second and long shovel pass. In and out of the hands of Love. That is an incompletion. TCU reacting just in case they called it a fumble, which it wasn't. It'll be third down. And boy, will that slow down your pass rush. As soon as you get that great pass rush, your second down at about eight yards, you're thinking pass all the way. They run that little shovel pass right at the middle. Now, it's actually, see the difference here on the regular pass? This is underneath. Now, of course, he never comes up with the football. Love never gets a handle on the football. But that is a thing. That is a play designed to slow down the rush. Wacker breathing a little easier. If Love had made the catch, he had all kinds of room in the middle. Well called play. He just didn't execute. Third down. They need nine. They dump it underneath. And Bowen cuts back and has another first down for the Mustangs. He is inside the TCU 40. The safeties bump and Rand having to bring down Bullock. Well, one of the intense players that we'll watch today for TCU is Jason Cobble, number 20, uh, 41. Watch this. He fights off a block, comes underneath. Now he makes a mistake there, but gets back in to get in on the tackle. He is a very intense player. Played at Brownwood for the legend, Gordon Wood, who says this is the most intense player I ever coached. Boy, that takes in a wide uh, span of products from Brownwood. I have very confident. First and ten. Robo for the first time goes down. And Collins and Bolden, the ends, meet at the quarterback for the Horn Frog. And that's the first sack of the season for Roosevelt Collins. A great talent there, number 48. Watch him, he'll come to the right of your screen, fights off a good yeah, block. Good coverage here on the short pass. Enough, they well, he does not when, when, uh, Robo he looks, looks back. There is Collins right in his face. And I know TCU fans are happy to see him start to play up to his ability. Nine play drive so far, but the biggest defensive play of the day was recorded on the sack, and now Romo once time. Well, he was down to one second on the 25-second uh, clock, so he had to call timeout. We'll take it with him. We'll be back after these messages from Southwest Airlines. It looked like another boring month. He was going to rearrange his sock drawer. She thought they'd fix the cap. Then they discovered Southwest Airlines fun fairs. Soon they were jetting away to all sorts of exciting cities. Seeing things their mothers had warned them about. Eating food they couldn't pronounce. Laughing out loud for no apparent reason. Southwest Airlines fun fairs. They're available now. And we'll have fun, 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 flying Southwest on a fun fair today. <laughs> We've owned this business for 12 years now. Rick's the numbers guy in Pete's ideas. He keeps us from killing each other. <laughs> well, somebody's got to. And then where will we be? Well, I could have had his office. And I could have had his what? parking place. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah, but it, of course. Of course. No, no, you, you, know what? you don't mean that, right? <laughs> we can split up this plan. Guys, right, you just talking about Jefferson Pilot, insurance and financial services. After the SMU timeout, they will talk about a second down and 17 with 9.59 remaining to the scoreless first quarter. 
Romo moving the ball well. With the little underneath passes. And at some point, you know he's got to start looking long. This may be the time. He began to break the game with the motion. And Romo looking his way, but the throw was behind him, and Wolf stumbled, so that one never had a chance, and it'll be third and 17. And they've run that play with, with great execution before that. The other way, they ran it twice and picked up those two big linemen circling out of the back, out of, off the line of scrimmage, and they were able to pick up 12, 15 yards. Now, if you're Mike Romo in this situation, it's third down and about 17 yards. You don't want to go short. You have to go long, have to pick up the distance. Perfect so far on third downs, but this is easily the longest they've had to go. And again, they try to shovel underneath. Here's the room that Love had previously. He is going to be very close for the first down near the 30-yard line. This is an amazing play. When, when Love gets his ball, he is standing right next to a TCU defender. Watch 34. He's going to sneak over here. Now watch the underneath. Watch the defender run right by him. Doesn't even see him. There's another one runs right by him. The ball is, is hidden, actually, because it's thrown about waist level. Here's the defensive backdrop. And you'll see they run right on by him. There's Love right in the right of your, left of your screen. Catches the ball, and there he comes right up the center of the field. Ponies go for it, fourth and one. And Kevin Love, with the forward surge, may have it. Looked like he cracked the 30. Oh, he had to get, actually had to get to the 30-yard line, didn't he, Dave? That was, the, that was the yard marker right on the 30-yard line. He is going to be awfully close. Boy, and Forrest Gregg upsets. It looked like about the spot of the ball. Now, where they've got it spotted, they still should have it, it looks like. <laughs> and look across the field, Jim Wacker saying, no way, he didn't make it. Don't even measure it. Well, Gregg, uh, I think one of the balls spotted where the final surge of Wolf ended up and it looked like he carried the pile forward inside the 30 Good and down. TCU by an inch holds on fourth down that might not have been an inch now when Wolf got this ball he didn't get it clean now watch where he gets it boom see he's stuffed right there now he really fights to get to that line and as you said he comes up an inch shy so we'll see the Frogs for the first time handle the ball in the triple shoot scoreless in Dallas Genuinely had right, here began to act up on me. It had spit and sputter. It was hard to start. A buddy of mine suggested that I fill up with super clean unleaded gasoline from Phillips 66. I did, and it worked. Now it starts right, and it runs right. The problem wasn't my new car. It was my old gasoline. Good things to cars and the people who drive them. Mustangs took the opening kick, drove the ball 50 yards in nearly six minutes, and they are turned away by an inch on fourth down. This is the first time we see TCU's offense led by Leon Clay, the sophomore quarterback from Gladewater, backed up Ron Giles most of last year, and spectacular in a couple of come-from-behind victories, one over Missouri, one over Oklahoma State. Play to work, headed for the sideline, ball is caught by Stephen Shipley, another sophomore from East Texas. He's from Lindale, and he's brought down by Chris Pallett. Now, the offensive unit for TCU with Modkins as the setback, Cedric Jackson the slotback. We talked about Blackwell, the outstanding tight end, with Shipley and McPherson as the wideouts. Up front, a huge, experienced offensive line. Elliott Sullivan, Breedlove, Marsh, and Alexander. They were banged up most of the week. In fact, the, the bulk of that offensive line unable to practice the knee injuries for them out of the Oklahoma State game. Shipley got six at second and four. And Clay chased by Omar Thompson on a blitz, still with it. Cracked down 
at the 31. That will be a loss for Leon Clay. Oh. Uzo Okeke in the defensive line for SMU along with the freshman Byron Bonds and Kenny Ray, like Okeke, a sophomore. Thompson, Kylie, Bednars, and Collins all but Collins are sophomores, and Simmons, Melanson, Artmore, a true freshman, and Brabham in the secondary. Now, one thing Clay is doing is he's calling the play after he makes the set. You see everybody looking back at him? They're relaying the play. They come out in a set formation, then he calls the play, depending upon what the defense is. They need nine. Looks like they got it. On the comeback route by McPherson. He knew exactly where the feet needed to be out across the 40. And it looks like a first down where they spot it. The Southwest Airline team must for TCU day. Well, first of all, don't wait till the second half. They've scored 44 of their 54 points in the second half. Tighten up that pass coverage that's allowed 71% completions. And, of course, improve the punting game. They only have a 31-yard average. And when you look at that combined with, combined with Bowen returning the ball 18 yards, that's not a very good net. Play again making the call at the line of scrimmage on first down. Dump pass, Jackson up to the 48. Cedric Jackson, the senior from Texarkana. And he's knocked down by Jason Bednars, the sophomore right inside linebacker. And Clay is doing a lot of call on the line. All he does is call the formation. He'll call it like triple shoot left, bring the strength to the left, and he walks up, he looks at the wide receiver, looks who's covering him, and then he makes the call out to him. You'll see him turn both directions, make one call this way. What do you think he can do? He yells it back, and then he comes up and snaps the ball. And he's got plenty of time. The play clock only now under 10. And off Modkins. First down, still going. Great balance, and he is inside the 40-yard line. That's how you get 195 yards. Absolutely. You see Modkins with that short stature, 5'9". He's 177 pounds. There's his average, 4.5 yards. But he's a, very, he's a very tight, compact runner so that when he makes those moves, he has a low center jet gravity, and you're just not going to take him down with an arm tackle. Look at that, four, five, six arm tackles. Sophomore from Marlin in Central Texas for the Frogs. Marching smartly down the field. First down again. And play looking deep over the middle to Paul. Intended for Richard Woodley, true freshman from Lamarck. SMU had it covered pretty well. At the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I will announce the Southwest Airlines player of the game. So keep that in mind along with us. Now, one of the things that Jim Wacker's team has done this year is gone without a huddle completely. This is very similar to it. Right now, he's making the call. You can see him standing about three yards off the line of scrimmage. He walks up, makes a call to the other side, and this is the actual call of the play. Does that bother the defense? No, not really, because the defense is set in what they're going to do. Give the Monkins to get out of the tackle, but wrapped up by Kylie. Left inside linebacker Bill Kiley, a co-captain from Cypress Fairbanks, tackled Modkins the way you have to. Oh, that was an excellent tackle. Let me tell you what Kiley did on that play. He broke down. Coaches tell you to break down into that hitting stance. Keep your balance and look at his belly button because he can't fake you out with his belly button. Look at this. Break down. Keep that body low. Right there. Perfect. And hang on for help. Second leading tackle last year and this year for the Mustangs. The drive so far for DCU. They need nine on third down. It is almost picked off by Bednars. It was intended for Michael Jackson, the slot back. Off his hands and then off the hands of Bednars. It will be fourth and nine. And a hand for the Mustang defense. They tighten it up. As the cross reached the 28. And Dave, we talk about control in this game. We've had one drive by SMU and one drive by TCU, and we have five and a half minutes left. That's all. Now, here is a real concern for TCU because Bowen averages 18 yards per return. Forsman averages less than 32 yards per kick. And the wobbly spiral bouncing for the Mustangs, and up back the other way, and it'll roll dead at about the 17-yard line. Nothing, nothing at Ombi Stadium, and we'll be back after these messages from Phillips 66. I uh, have always thought that uh, putting down one piece of road was...
pretty much the same as any other. Then I found out that underneath all this asphalt, these guys are laying down this special fabric from Philip 66. It's called Petroman. Now they say it'll not only make this piece of road last longer, it'll also make it safer. If Philip 66 puts that much into a road, think how much they put into their gasoline. Only a 21-yard punt by Fordsman. So from the 17-yard line, the Mustang offense taking over for the second time today. We've seen two extended drives turned away on the third down. And in, in SMU's case, a fourth down opportunity. Romo five for seven in that first drive, accounting for 46 of the 50 yards they cover. And the draw goes to Love. He gets maybe two. It's 6'2", 230-pounder. Averaging better than five and a half yards per carry through the first two games. James Prather, the left defensive tackle on the stop. Rushing defense is outstanding for TCU. They lead the conference. They're 15th in the NCAA. A different story in terms of passing defense, where they are 7th in the conference, allowing 256 yards per game. That should make Romo's eyes light up. And Wolf made the cut at a different time from that which Romo expected because the ball was way past where he ended up and it'll be third down at eight. Well, I, was, I, was watching, I was watching some of the wideouts that time. I watched Ware go downfield. I believe it was Ware. And, no, excuse me, Arthur Jordan, number eight, went downfield and he broke wide open. Now watch for him to come back in that huddle and say, hey, listen, I broke wide open on a post pattern. Over there. Oh. That's Jordan in motion on third and eight. And the ball is deflected by Collins. This TCU defensive line has not racked up very big numbers in this first three games. But late in that first drive and on third down here, they get good penetration on Romo. And that was Roosevelt Collins, again, 48, who got the good penetration. He's in the up stance. Now watch him. He comes right up, jump, and get right in the face of the quarterback. And you can see the quarterback trying to throw an underneath handoff. Mike Romo's going to have, have to have more time than that to throw that ball. He's going to have to delay that big rush a little bit more to get that pass off. Brian Lawson did not punt at all in the Vanderbilt victory. 5 for 42 against Tulane. Rush comes, gets it off, and Anthony Hickman will take it at the 46. And reach midfield. He is swarmed under. Six or seven blue jerseys. 21, first quarter, as we return to Ombi in a moment. There's something new coming to you from Budweiser, and if the label turns your head, wait till you taste it. New Bud Dry. The first beer cold filtered for smooth draft taste, and dry brewed for no aftertaste. <laughs> So if you're looking for smooth taste with no aftertaste, turn here. Try Bud Dry. I can't wait till I retire. You know why? I'm going to Africa. There's this one small area here where the lions sleep in the trees. You know why? To get away from this tiny ant. Gets in their fur, drives them wild. So they sleep in the trees. When I retire, I really want to see that. Then we've got these gazelles. Eat 30 feet at a time. You know why? Lions get hungry. Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. Please put emergency services on standby. Enter the Southwest Airlines Dr. Pepper Southwest Conference sweepstakes. Just the name of today's player of the game. The sweepstakes, 1300 West Mockingbird Lane, 8501 in Dallas, 75247. Winners of the weekly drawing receive a pair of tickets to the Southwest Conference home game. And the Ryan Combat Fair is the new game of the week. Do that along with Dave Redd. It's served by Southwest Airlines. Grand prize will be equipped for four of the most interesting people, including Dennis, Ryan Combat Fair, 
Dave's having a good time. The other thing that makes this a rock race is that when they look at these games in the preseason, they say, hey, we can win that one. And both teams are saying that. 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 And both teams are saying that.
And then out across to the 32-yard line, and he'll have a first down. Scott Hines from the strong side linebacker position on the tackle finally. And Hines was fortunate to get in this play. He's one of those linebackers who's playing off. He's at the top. Now watch. Slide along the line. Find the running back. Really, on that play, if Love doesn't trip, Love's got about 8 to 10 more yards on that play. He tripped coming through. Hines out of Sam Houston High School in Arlington and then Fort Scott Community College in Kansas. Jim Wacker dipping into the JUCOs this year to replace some lost talent from 1989. And now we've got a Mustang shaken up at the 25-yard uh, line and it's Trey Giller, the right tackle. Giller, the sophomore, the uh, senior out of St. Richardson. Graded out in the top two among all their offensive linemen last year. He would be a big loss if he can't return. He is the only senior up front. I was just going to say that's a rarity on SMU, a senior. Robbie Risco, a sophomore, replaces him. Romo, long count, first down, give love. Again, breaks the tackle, but not the second hit by Hines, who wraps him up the way he did the other time around the ankle. Prevented a much bigger gain, potentially, from Love, who gets the 35 and a half yard line. But when your linebackers sit back, as TCUs are, and you're playing pass, predominantly pass, if you're able to get that running back through that seam, he bursts through the seam, he's in the secondary, so he picks up big chunks of yardage. Down near a minute on second and six, scoreless first quarter from Dallas. Romo has his man beer. Cut back, still going. 45 and down. And Greg Evans with the tackle on 40 beer. Well, first of all, the first thing that happens is the linebackers are dropping back into a zone coverage. Watch. See pass, drop back. Now they're just picking up zones here. Now he cuts back against the grain. Now one of the things you have to remember when you cut back against the grain is don't lose the first down yardage. See, he puts his head down there knowing that that was first down yardage. Corey Beard leading SMU receiver. With 12 through the first two games. Romo. And finds Bowen who drops it. He had Edward Gallabies on his tail. He had uh, a perfectly thrown ball right in his hands and may have looked away an instant too early. I think he did. I think he looked away just the old adage of looking away as you're trying to run before you catch the ball. And that's what Bowen was guilty of that time. I think he was surprised to be that open on one-on-one -on -one coverage down the middle with no deep safety there. Craig Giller back in at right tackle. The Royal Trump, a slight shoulder injury, should return for TCU at their strong safety. Big opportunity dropped by Bowen for second and ten. This time he makes sure and uh, into frog territory as the clock rolls at the 47-yard line and 24 seconds all that remains in the first period. And one of the things that I am really impressed with SMU this week as compared to two weeks ago is the patience of their offense. With the run and shoot, you have to take advantage of whatever they give you. If they give you the short down, you keep on picking away at them, picking away. If they give you the long one, you go deep, but you don't try to force one against the other. And they're being very patient in their offense today. That is the end of the first quarter. So TCU nothing and SMU nothing. We will be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Pinching the side of the thrust lever just to move it a middle of what you want is a flyer. You want first class. But the boss isn't going to prove first class. So at Eastern, you can buy coach and fly first. And we've got enough seats to accommodate all of you. Incredible. So what do you think? It seems to have an effect. The rotation increasing in engine. You know, we've seen what empty airplanes look like here. We don't like it. The rotation Our employees the don't like it. Was we know what it takes to bring you back. And we're prepared to invest to in it. 29 to 30 to 32. As well. Back, back, Watch out for